Maybe I hand over to you. You can share your screen, and you can you can do the demo now. Thank you. Okay. Let's just uh, quickly give you um, a short demo. Okay, can you guys see my screen all right? Yes, I can see. You can see. Okay, on my screen, I have a uh, spot fire, and I believe uh, some people, they are not familiar with spot fire, so we're probably going to use uh, Orange, you know, and uh, Orange can be downloaded uh, using an encoder navigator, and we have a Jupyter Notebook right here. Jupyter Notebook is usually used for Python. Um, and there are some PowerShell. If you are familiar with PowerShell, you can have all the application in here. Uh, someone asked a question about R programming. You also have R Studio right here, you know. So you can have all this package all in one place. Um, and you can also download uh, Orange. Orange is a visualization uh, software. It's usually used by data scientists uh, because it, it kind of have a, inbuilt uh, algorithm that you can easily work with you know it, it, it makes a lot of things easier now um so today we're just going to quickly go over a short display of uh, uh visualization so the way orange works is uh, you can click drag and drop you know so i'm going to click on the file right here and when i click twice it just brings it once you can delete that. So this is the one we're gonna be looking at today. Uh, what we're doing is gonna be just simple classification, you know, and uh, to get the, 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 the file, there's already inbuilt file that is existing. So we're gonna open it and uh, you can come here and uh, try to pick any of these files because they're already in there. But today we're just gonna look at the zoo uh, type. Um, and over here, you can see some of the information already. You can look at the data sets um, and how many information is this year. Here is say, talking about consistent of uh, 101 animals with uh, various uh, trends to describe them. So they have different animals in here. So uh, there are trends is that can be described, which are like the variables, uh, air, feathers, egg, you know, milk, hairborne, and you know, different stuff, predator, and all those kind of stuff. Uh, we can reset, you know, but uh, it's not going to reset because of uh, there's nothing to actually do because we already have the uh, file in here. So we get up there, and uh, yeah, to have a classification. We're just gonna look at uh, some of the um, we're gonna look at some of the different modeling. And when you drag it like this, it can pop up. So I'm just gonna search for some modeling system. So we have a nine base and um, I'm going to look at for tree. Uh, tree used to be called decision tree, you know, so, um, and um, then I'm going to look at some other ones that is in here. We can look for, um, linear projection. Okay, so that is not good for this classification. We can remove that. And uh, let me see if we have some other ones here. Yeah, we can look for the CN in rules. So we're gonna to try to get maybe like five or six to see if we'll be able to 
have uh, more varieties. So let's look for like, uh, like something like neural network. And uh, we can look for like class. What about logistic? Logistics? Logistic regression? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we can have all that as well. We can also have a, just a 1K near. So let's say we have this like this. Um, I think we should also have a random forest. So, okay. All right. So, so we can basically do this and uh, we should have one of looking at the test learner. We can use the test score. So, oops. So now we can bring all this here. Again, what we are trying to do is to see, to, to do a classification whereby we want to see like, uh, which is the best to use for uh, prediction or if we want to use for analysis. So, I'm gonna remove this so that I can use it to show you guys something first. Okay, so when we have these, We can decide to click on it. So when you click on it, you won't be able to really see anything because we don't have the data in there. So I'm gonna draw this right here. Okay, so now you can start to look at the evaluation results. So. When you look at the evaluation results, you want to look at the uh, accuracy right here, where you have the classification accuracy. So underneath the classification accuracy, you want to check which one is predicting better. Um, looking at this percentage, you look at 0 0.98 and uh, 1.00. So it looks like we are having like, uh, Probably you're looking at the CN2 rule that is predict predicting a lot better. Um, then three is it's a little bit uh, weird, so I don't kind of prefer it for this analysis. We can remove it later, um, but we can also increase the training set because in most cases you want to use like 70%, you know, for the for the training set. So if you do that, it's gonna like reevaluate what you're trying to look at. Okay. So looking at that, we have the KN, which is a, a pretty very good in terms of the accuracy. Um, so we also have the CN2 that is pretty good as well. So at this point, we'll be able to determine which one is more preferable for us to, to use. But we can also change the, the target class. You know, we can, instead of using Mama, we can decide to use Afabia, you know, for the target uh, class. And the number of folds, we can also change this, but five is pretty good.
just giving us warning. Control foot cross validation. This come on class that already for instance. So let's see. We don't need that. So it's saying some of the score could not be computed. So let's see if we use three, see what happens. So it looks like three is better, but let's. So once we have this, at this point, we can um, decide to remove some of them that we don't really need. But let's say we just leave it, leave them, but we can be rest assured that the most accurate one is the KNN. Um, so we can go with that. Uh, but let's say if we decide to make it 10. Okay, some of them cannot be computed. So we'll leave it at three and uh, we'll take it from here. So after we, we, we take it from here, we can try to have uh, something like um, ways of uh, determining the thing that will come from evaluation, what we call a uh, coefficient matrix. So if we click on coefficient matrix, Coefficient matrix will be able to show you, give you kind of more light on so coefficient matrix will prob will break it down for you to show you how it was predicted. I mean sorry, how it was classified, and you'll be able to see the way they actually were put together. And you can look at uh, random forest as well, and you'll be able to see using Aphibia. So you see how it was put together. So with this, you'll be able to know which classification is best for you to actually use to either predict your data, the data that you have, and um, which one is not good for you. So if, for example, we don't need the um, the nav base, we can just remove it. The same applies to any of these. You can remove them. And we'll be able to concentrate on just this. So that is one of the ways that you can actually classify your, your data and what you want to do with it. Um, for the sake of time, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to show you from a different visualization tools that I also use. And this one is Spotfire. So for like Spotfire, what you can do is um, you, you can get your data. The data I'm going to be using today is just from my desktop. Okay. And this is going to be quick because I know we don't have enough time. Um, so this is oil and gas annual production. And it's starting from uh, 1985 to 2000. So just real quick. Okay, so over here, you can decide to change some of the data type, you know, but we don't have enough time. So we're just gonna quickly bring the data over. So by the time you bring the data over, it just uh, looks like this. It's a little bit slow because this is a free version of it. So bear with me. So you come over here and bring out the table. From the table, you begin to see how the data look. And after you see that, you can play with the table by coming to this region and look at the different um, data set. Again, you can change some, can format it and clean it, which is the most one of the most exciting part of uh, data science whereby you have to clean data. Sometimes you have to merge it, you know, um, so it's not responding now. Let's just wait a little bit. 
Okay, so after that, you can decide to build your shards. And you can also bring in um, test area. Um, I'm gonna bring my screen down here. So your shard, for example, if you wanna like, uh, let's say uh, we are looking at our production feed name. Um, and uh, we can make this Arizona, Arizona. And uh, you look at the production feed name and you want to like uh, check terms of, uh, let's say report here or well type. So if we have, I don't like wait type. Let's see, we want to have a completion. Completion is not so good as well. Uh, month in production. This report here is gonna give you something like this, but that's not good. But we'll look at um, color by where name. Color by where name is gonna give you where you can differentiate the color. And this, we don't really need this anymore. We already know what it is. So you can take that out. So how much time we have? Um, so for the test area, you can decide to play with it. As you can see, you see HTML there. You can play with it. You can put some feature in here. For example, if you want to look at a specific year, uh, you can say uh, put in here. And you can, you can decide to bring it down to see if there's a specific year you want to look at. But you can also change that format instead of having a uh, uh, reporting year. You can change it to have a, something like this, you know, and you can select which year you want to look at, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, but I think I've already exhausted my, my time. So if we have more time, I would have uh, demonstrate more. There are so many things you can do with this uh, particular software. Um, so I will hand over it to Mr. Riaz. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Erdia. Uh, can you please stop sharing first? <laughs> Yeah, I really uh, like the demo in Orange. Okay, I think every day, every every semester, I have to learn new tool. I think <laughs> to to do that, what you do, uh, if I'm using another language, or uh, it will take hardly half an hour to forty minutes to do that. That you just do it in five minutes. So that was wow. I would say when you put the conclusion metric, I was thinking, wow, this guy making it in few minutes. What I do for a uh, half an hour or even goes to one hour if you add the algorithm. That's a great one, I would say, Mr. Erdia. Thank you very much for that demo. I think I'm going to start learning Orange, whether my student learn or not, that's a different story. I hope oh, they, will, they will. That's a great demo. Thank you very much, Mr. Erdia. Let's see anyone have final question one, question one, the one question because of the time. So I have a question. Yes, please go ahead. Um, just now, uh, is it possible to put more than one target class in orange uh, for the test and score part? Yes, you can put one uh, more than, so when you have, there's a dial-up uh, button that you click on, it will ask you to select the, uh, the target class. But as far as I can tell, for the free version, I have not been able to put more than one uh, target class, but I'm not so, I think it is flexible enough because I've worked with the program uh, for a few times and uh, I understand it's flexible enough for that to be possible in the purchase version of it, which right, is like right. the enterprise version of it. Okay, because I was trying Orange. Uh, it's like, I tried to put more than one target class, which it doesn't work. So that's why I just wanted to clarify whether it's possible or not. And thank you very much. Yeah, I think uh, for the enterprise uh, version of it, 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 it will be possible because it's a very flexible application, but for the free version, I have not been able to do that. 
Right. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you, Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ranusha. Thank you, Ms. Ranusha. Good to hear that some of my students are ahead of me. I have to catch up with them. See? <laughs> okay, that's good to, good to hear. We have one more minute.